food hygiene, why this matters. Food hygiene is important and this should be a concern for everyone including researcher and also the development practitioners um, because of three reasons. The first reason uh, I would say uh, we have uh, because of the links of food hygiene with the food burn infection globally. This is matters for everyone including children. Uh, uh, why? Because we, as we know that the food hygiene, I mean inadequate food hygiene is likely to account for a substantial proportion of diarrheal disease uh, basically for uh, infant, and under, under, I mean, infant and young children. Uh, as we know also that the diarrhea which is preventable and treatable still kills the, uh, the uh, 800,000 under 5 years children every year and this is still the second leading cause of uh, under 5 child mortality globally. And this is also uh, the underlying cause for malnutrition and uh, the other infection like pneumonia for children. So this is matters for everyone including the children. The secondly, um, we have lack of evidences from the uh, developing country context. Uh, we have high, uh, lots of evidences from high income settings, let us say in, in US. Uh, one in six people is still gets the food burn infection every year. In UK, that where we are now, the five, one in five people gets a gastrointestinal infection every year. So we have evidences from high income settings with the magnitude of the problem is still high in uh, high income settings. The, in low income settings, we have lack of evidences. We have lack of surveillance, we have lack of um, the field based uh, research data in terms of quantify the magnitude of the, the food burn infection. Um, but what we assume about food burn infection uh, in low income settings is based on expert opinion and biological plausibility rather than the field evidences. Therefore, I got interested and also this is a matter for any, any researcher to work on in developing uh, settings uh, targeting to these, uh, these issues. And then so far there is a little effort to integrate food hygiene uh, as part of the uh, diarrhea, uh, malnutrition and food burn uh, control initiatives. So globally there is a need of uh, um, uh, so called designing of scalable intervention which can be replicated uh, in a low income settings uh, in order to improve the food hygiene behaviors thereby reduce the, uh, the contamination in food and also the diarrheal disease. Uh, this is going to be part of my PhD research. Uh, uh, the aim of my study is to assess the effect of simple, feasible and replicable food hygiene intervention on the, on the effects of mother's food hygiene practice as a primary outcomes and the effect of that intervention on a reduced level of microbiological contamination and diarrheal disease as a secondary outcome. So through this uh, study I am also going to assess how food hygiene intervention can be integrated in health, uh, water sanitation and hygiene wash and also the nutrition sector in Nepal. So in order to achieve this aim, I have divided my study in two phases, the formative research as well as the second phase, the uh, cluster randomized trial. So in first phase, I am going to assess the level of existing level of uh, food hygiene practices among mothers and also determine the environmental and the psychological determinants among mothers. And I am also going to assess the mic level of microbiological contamination in food and the, the identify the critical control point. Based on this formative research finding, I am going to design an intervention which will be implemented in next phase. I chose Nepal because of many reasons. Uh, that includes uh, uh, Nepal is one of the least developed countries uh, in the world. Uh, it ranks in 138 out of 169 countries in terms of human development index. Around 16 million Nepali population uh, which is around 57 percent of the Nepali population is still defecating in open air. That means huge environmental contamination. Despite of some significant improvement in health sector in terms of reducing child mortality, the diarrhea is still remain the second leading cause of child mortality in Nepal. So intervention which needs to, uh, intervention around diarrhea reduction is still um, uh, paramount in Nepal. And then uh, the diarrhea is still more prevalent in Nepal. There was a huge diarrhea outbreak in 2009 which killed around 346 children with a one, a one outbreak, so huge problem. The secondly, the um, uh, childhood undernutrition is still a big issue in Nepal. Therefore, these reasons, this basically statistics give me a good platform to work on uh, food hygiene intervention in Nepal. Uh, the study is designed to conduct in a rural setting of Nepal, which is uh, in Kabri districts, which is 45 kilometer east uh, from Kathmandu, which is the capital city of Nepal. I use the multiple uh, uh, tools to gather the information from formative research. Those includes I have started observing the mother's daily routine. I have uh, I have done the uh, day life analysis of uh, all mothers in 30 households. Uh, I have done the uh, teach the research session whereby mothers need to teach me how to cook the food. My objective was to observe their food hygiene behaviors. Uh, I did uh, 
uh, by recruiting the local people, I, we have uh, done the video filming uh, of the mothers when they are actually preparing and cooking the food for the children. We have done 68 household uh, survey uh, and 68 household observation and then uh, the couple of focus group discussion, 11 focus group discussion and then at the end the method was to collect the food uh, sample from the different households. So altogether 105 food sample were gathered uh, uh, in different uh, four stages. Those includes immediately after cooking, immediately after cooking just while feeding to the baby, after five hour storage and after reheating and then water and the milk sample were also tested. The, uh, the environmental cleanliness was uh, quite poor in the village. Uh, when I was uh, in, the, in the village, I observed almost 80% of the, uh, the household was, uh, uh, I have seen the visible animal feces in 80% of the household. I observed the, the cleanliness of the utensil, which was almost 60% of the, the utensil were uh, unclean. The kitchen surface, most almost 50% of those kitchen surface were unclean. When I analyzed the video, uh, video, what I observed, there were various missed opportunities in terms of practicing the BABS. There were 117 opportunity to wash hands by soap while cooking, mother are actually cooking to the child food. But 94% of those opportunities were missed. Uh, that means only 6% of the opportunities were actually utilized by washing hands with the soap. Uh, then I sort of uh, also observed the other missed opportunities, let us say the, the, the opportunities uh, in terms of covering the food, there were opportunities, almost 50% of those opportunities were used. But covering was not adequate in that um, uh, environment. In food preparation, mothers are doing multiple exposure, they need to feed to the children, they need to go in the feed to the animals, they need to uh, go and wash the, uh, the, the cloths and the utensils, so multiple uh, exposure are doing by the mothers uh, while food preparing. The, the fortunate part is while uh, cooking to the food, most of them are following the traditional food pract uh, cooking practices and they are, most of them are using the firewood to cook the food. That means thorough cooking. Most of them are cooking the thoroughly to the food, which actually kills the bacteria. So that was the good part. When you start the feeding, the, there was a huge problem when uh, mothers actually start feeding to the baby. While feeding, what they do is basically they took, uh, they took the food from the vessels, the cooking vessels, and they, took, they put the food in a plates or bowl. And then as soon as they put the food in a bowl and they, they put the hand to mix the food, uh, right? So while these, if those plates are contaminated and the, the hands are contaminated, actually child uh, will receive the lots of uh, fecal contamination uh, from there. And when I tested uh, the food sample during that particular time, I found lots of contamination. And the food storage, as I said earlier, most of them will cover the food, but the covering food was not adequate. When it comes to reheating, reheating was uh, not proper. When I actually measured the reheating temperature, Almost 50% of those uh, who reheat the food, the 80% uh, of those uh, are not correctly reheating the food. So basically they reheat the food briefly uh, due to various reasons, so that was not adequate to kill the bacteria. Uh, basically, my next, next step is to design any intervention based on the uh, already identified five BABS. So I'll I'll go into detail on these five BABS and design an in, I'll design an intervention. After designing an intervention, next step is to run a cluster randomized trial. In order to run a trial, I'll have one control group and one intervention group. Uh, intervention group will receive a food hygiene intervention, and after uh, intervention, after th that intervention will be three months long. After uh, three months uh, implementation, I'll assess the effect of that intervention in terms of uh, measuring the uh, the uh, the effects of uh, mother's food hygiene practices and the level of microbiology in the food and the diarrhea reduction. Of course, the my primary concern, my primary outcomes will be the mother's behaviors, and secondary outcomes will be microbiology and diarrhea. However, I'll assess those, and that that assessment will be before and after trial. After intervention, my next step will be assessing how this food hygiene intervention can be integrated in health, water, sanitation, hygiene, and also the nutrition sector uh, program and uh, strategies in Nepal. Uh, if this works, of course, uh, I'll be advocating this to integrate in different uh, program. Of course, this is a paramount uh, for any was health and uh, nutrition sector people. Uh, and if it works, if th this intervention works, of course, I'll be saving the lives of the children.